Hello and welcome to Richard's Comics. Uh, on today's episode, I'd like to go over the latest uh, comic book haul that I have. Today we got some DC books, some Marvel books, and a few other independents sprinkled in. So let's start with our first book. This is Swamp Thing Green Hell, number two. The first issue of this book actually came out back in December of 2001, so it has been quite a while since we've seen this title. They did release the second print of issue number one not too long ago, but um, needless to say, it's been quite a while uh, since we've had a new issue. Next up is a familiar cover for most people. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 129, the facsimile edition. As we all know, it's the first appearance of The Punisher. Classic cover, good looking book. Next up, this is the current issue of Amazing Spider-Man, issue number Legacy 914, issue number 20 of this volume. Got a nice cover with Black Cat and Spider-Man. Next up, another facsimile, Avengers number eight. First appearance of Kane, classic Avengers comic book cover. Next up, Batman and the Joker, The Deadly Duo, book four. Very good series. I think it's hands down the best Batman series on the shelf right now. I recommend you check it out. Next up, Batman and Superman, World's Finest, number 12. I've not read this issue yet, but apparently Robin and Supergirl go on a date in the issue. Looking forward to checking it out. Next up, kind of a total nostalgic uh, cover. Darkwing Duck number two with the villain Quacker Jack on the cover. I enjoyed the first issue of Darkwing Duck. I like what Dynamite's doing with Darkwing Duck and with Gargoyles right now. So I'm going to keep, if they keep it up, I'll keep buying it. Next up, Deceased, War of the Undead Gods, number six of eight. This series has been very crazy. Anything can happen. Anyone can live and die in every issue. Um, only two issues left after this. We'll have to see where it goes. Next up is Eight Billion Genies, number seven of eight. I think this uh, series, it's still pretty good, but it was definitely much stronger in the first three or four issues. I think it's kind of slipped and gone downhill some. This probably should have been a six issue limited series and not eight issues. I'm hoping that it can be back uh, to the quality that we saw with the first uh, two or three issues uh, before this is over with. Next up is Flash number 793. This continues the one minute war arc. Uh, for the most part, it's been pretty good, but honestly, it's more of the characterization of the characters. As far as action, there really hasn't been that much besides the opening issue. I'm hoping that they pick up the pace of this story. Next up, Gunslinger Spawn, number 17. This has probably been one of the best titles I've been reading for the last uh, year and a half or so. Uh, it has good art, good storytelling. I really have no clue where it's going, but uh, every issue is exciting, and again, if you like uh, lots of action, good art, and good storytelling, uh, check out Gunslinger Spawn. Next up is Hulk number 12. This is legacy number, let's see, 779. Uh, I like the art in this book by Ryan Otley. Uh, personally, I don't think the writing is very good at all. Um, it's, it kind of reminds me of an early 90s comic, uh, heavy on action and art, light on actual writing and character development. I'm really only reading this because of the upcoming story arc with the new Hulk per, uh, Persona uh, Titan. I'm hoping it gets better, but um, this is, book is close to being on the chopping block of getting pulled off of my pull list. Next up is I Hate Fairyland number four. While this looks like a kid's title, it is not. This is a mature title. So make sure if you read this that you don't uh, show any children this book. This is really for adults. Next up, another Spawn book. This is Scorch, number 15. And I have to hand it to Todd McFarlane, the people over at Image, and working on the Spawn books. Every one of the Spawn books is very solid. 
Um, the story can drag some, but there's a ton of good character development. The writing is excellent. The art is very good. Um, the Spawn books, in my opinion, are probably top to bottom the best set of books in all of comics right now. Next up is Spider-Man number five, Legacy number 161. Um, I love the Mark Bagley art. Uh, the story by Dan Slott, in my opinion, is really dragging. Uh, very slow. Um, again, it kind of reminds me of Flash One Minute War. There's uh, lots of action, at, especially at the very beginning of the uh, series. But it seems like, for the most part, that the main villain is barely even in the story at all. At all. And we're focusing on characters that, honestly, uh, I don't give a two flips about. I'd prefer they focus more on Peter Parker and get away from these auxiliary Spider-Man characters, but will honestly probably be forgotten after this story arc. Next up, Star Wars number 31. Really good cover there. Unfortunately, the story inside, in my opinion, is very boring. Um, it's set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Um, they're really, really milking this Luke developing to a Jedi story arc. I know they want to expand on that, but frankly, it's about putting me to sleep. Um, the supporting characters, for the most part, are forgettable, to say the least. We really need to focus on the main characters from the original Star Wars trilogy and not on these other peripheral characters that no one really cares about. Next up, Star Wars Yoda, number four. The first story arc, honestly, was pretty forgettable. Um, besides Yoda himself, there wasn't a single Jedi in the book that really anyone knew about or probably cared about. Uh, the fact they have Count Dooku in here, I think, is a really good idea. I'm looking forward to hoping that this series picks up. Next up, Thor number 31, Legacy number 757. Uh, this does continue Thor's story where he's trying to rescue his sister as well as trying to figure out uh, the origin of Thanos and trying to unravel the nightmare dream they had back in issue number six. Uh, for the most part, Thor has been pretty good, but honestly, um, the Endless Winter or, uh, has been the best part of this book, and that was really the first story arc. For the most part, uh, these other story arcs, while they're decent, like for example, God of Hammers, they really seem like more like filler and not really getting much done. Um, I would really prefer that they focus more on the Thanos uh, story arc and some of the uh, that uh, horrible future that Thor had a nightmare about back in issue six. Okay, last book on the list today is Wiz Comics number two, facsimile edition, first appearance of uh, Shazam or Captain Marvel as he was known. Um, I've liked these facsimiles that both Marvel and DC are doing. They're doing a great job with them. That's one thing why I think a lot of their main stories are filler or boring, and they're focusing on characters that no one cares about. Um, I do like the facsimiles because these are classic comics that a lot of us can't really afford, and you basically get a, a brand new copy of what the comic would look like back when these came out. I think this particular uh, original issue came out in like 1940. Okay, that was the last comic. Thank you for watching today. Be sure to uh, read what you like. Uh, don't worry about what everybody else tells you to read. Read the story and the characters that you enjoy. And if you don't like what's currently being printed, there's tons of back issues that you can go and check out as well. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.